Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are about to start our Sunday school session this morning. We would like to welcome you all, those that are watching a live stream via Facebook or YouTube. Welcome to Grace Tabernacle's Sunday school session. Praise God. We are about to pray. Precious Father, as we come before you this morning, we just want to magnify your holy name. We want to lift you up and give you all the glory and all the honor because you are indeed worthy. There is none like unto you, Jesus. We want to thank you this morning for life. Thank you for health and strength this morning. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being the awesome God that you are. As we come before you, mighty God, you said in your word, whatever it is that we're doing in word or in deed, we should do all things in your name, Jesus. So as we are about to commence our Sunday school service, mighty God, we put it before you and we ask, oh God, for your blessings. We ask, oh God, that you bless our Sunday school teacher this morning. We ask, oh God, that you'll have your way this morning. Let your word go forth with power. Let it go forth with clarity. Mighty God, I pray, oh God, that you'll feed us this morning your spiritual food mighty God I pray oh God that your will will be accomplished this morning as we commit all in your hands mighty God have your own way as we tell you thanks in Jesus name we'll now turn over to Pastor Moncrief Pastor Steve Moncrief praise the Lord Jesus and thank you sister Gray and let us all praise the Lord Jesus Praise God and want to say welcome to those who are watching us. Amen, people from Grace Tabernacle and those that might be overseas. We want to say we welcome you and thanks for watching. Praise the Lord. This morning, amen, is a great day and we are thankful to the Lord for his great salvation that he has afforded us. Amen. Because of his love towards us, he made provision that we could escape, amen, the penalty of sin. Praise God. So our Sunday school this morning, we'll be looking at a, our topic, amen, is the gift of a pastor. The gift of a pastor. Praise the Lord Jesus. And the Holy Spirit in his wisdom, amen, chose to put gifts in the church. Amen, he made um, some prophets, some evangelists, they made some amen, apostles, some pastors and teachers and say this is for the edification of his people and for the perfecting of the saints, amen, until we reach that level where the Lord wants us. Praise the Lord Jesus. We'll have to reach that stage in this life. Amen. Of acceptance where the Lord wants us. Amen. Before death. We can't, amen, wait until we are dead. Amen. For this to be done. And so we thank the Lord this morning for, amen, the gift of pastors. Amen. In every system, you need leadership. You need someone at the head, someone to guide. Amen. And so we're going to be looking into this wonderful, beautiful gift. That the Lord has placed in his church through his wisdom. So whenever we think of a pastor, we must think about God in his wisdom. Doing things for us that is necessary. We must understand that the Lord is not a waste. The Lord doesn't waste time. He doesn't do things unnecessarily. And so if his church could, you know, exist without a pastor, then the Lord would not place a pastor within the church and none of the gifts if a church could function without then none of these gifts would have been relevant because God is not like me I have done a lot of things in life I've considered waste and if I could live my life over a lot of things that I have done I would not have done it I probably would have done it a different way but not so with God his work is final and so this morning I see this amen and standing even in the position of a pastor, I count it a very great honor, amen, not that I'm boasting and exalting myself above any, but I consider it an honorable position, working 
in the Lord's kingdom as an under shepherd, amen, and one that give oversight to the church that he has purchased with his own blood. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so this morning's focus will be that we want to look at is, and the thing is, I will listen to my pastor's voice in my life. Right? Make that as a statement. I will listen to my pastor's voice in my life. Will you? <laughs> and, you know, the focus verse we'll be looking is Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. And it said, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So, one of the responsibilities of the pastor is to hear the words of God from his mouth. So, it is not our message. The pastor is not bringing his word or his message. The pastor is to bring God's word to his people. And we must also give warning. And when you talk about warning, it means that there is a pending danger. If there is no danger, there will be no need for us to warn. And so the pastor's, amen, responsibility, one of them, is to, well, to give instruction to people for their safeguard and for their spiritual development and also to warn them and because there are consequences that will follow if one rejects the word of God. And so that's one of the things. So the focus will be, the focus verse is Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So Ezekiel didn't become a watchman. He didn't become a watchman because of his own doing. It was not his own choice. The Lord the Scripture said, I have made thee a watchman. I made you, Elijah, um, you know, Ezekiel, a watchman over Israel and bring my word to the people. And that is what you know, I want to bring to you. And we're going to be looking into the scriptures and the whole lesson for this, this scripture text will be Ezekiel 3 from verse 16 to 19. And it says, And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth. And give them warning from me. So it is from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. His blood will be at your hand. And so we know where the, his blood will be. All right, we'll be at the end of Ezekiel. And reading from 19, it says, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness and committed iniquity and is laid to stumbling block and I lay a stumbling block before him he shall die because thou hast not given him warning he shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered but his blood will I require at thy hand nevertheless if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous man sin not, and he doeth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. So there's a tremendous responsibility upon the pastor, 
and he stands before the congregation to minister the word of the Lord. Just as the Lord spoke to Ezekiel, the Lord sent out Ezekiel to be his watchman. He appointed him and he sent him to warn his people, Israel. And the Lord told him what type of people these would be. One, they were a stiff-necked people and they would not really listen to you, Ezekiel. He was told that, you know, they're not going to listen to you, but I'm going to send you nonetheless. The pastor's responsibility is to minister to the flock. And it, it, yes, his desire is that the flock would listen. Because when the flock listens, the flock can be spared a lot of, um, a lot of evil that could affect them. They, they could spe be spared from the, the wolves and from dogs and lions. But if the flock refuse to, then problem can set in. So it is just the same with us today that the church is under some leadership and God will not have his institution to be left on autopilot where all men would do his own thing. That would be a sure remedy for um, disaster, catastrophe. You're going to have anarchy. And God is not an author of confusion. He's not going to have his business running as a confused business. NC set up pastor over the church. And not pastors over one church, but he has a pastor over the church. Not a pastorate, but he has a pastor leading, a leader, somebody in charge to guide others. And we may work together, yes, as a members of a of, of departments or, you know, other workers within the assembly. But, you know, not all men are leaders and not all are appointed leaders. And we respect the one that the Lord, you should respect the one that the Lord said to, to lead. So Ezekiel went and it was not very well just as he did. But he would, his responsibility was to deliver God's word because... In delivering God's word, he was going to save himself, right? He was going to deliver his soul because the blood of these people would be required at his hand if he did not. And so with haste, he would have to bring the word of God. The pastor must understand that the, there are a lot of persons that are in his care and that he, it is important that he recognize that proper guidance and leadership must be ministered to these people because their soul is dependent upon his ministry. Yes, I will repeat that again. The brethren, the saints' soul is dependent upon the ministry of the pastor. The Bible said we must pray for them for they give an account for your soul. We cannot just live in total disregard of pastoral leadership. We must understand that one, God placed them there. Two, you must obey the Lord. And three, it will be well for your soul. Amen. And so pastors are very important in, in life as we go on. So we must... Um, so the watchman is very important to the business of life, to God's business. What was happening when the Lord chose um, Ezekiel and appointed him a watchman? Israel had gone into stumbling. They had gone into rebellion. They had turned away from God. And I want us to understand that today's church is not different from Israel's behavior in the olden days. And as much as we have the Holy Spirit in us, if you should analyze our behavior, human's behavior, you realize that we behave the very same way as those people that were there in the time of Elijah, or in, sorry, in the time of um, Ezekiel. We realize that in as much as we have the Holy Spirit in us, and they, the Holy Spirit will come upon them, some of them, not all of them, but the appointed ones, we find out that um, we would do things the very same way that they did in as much as we have the Spirit of God in us. 
It is just that we are human beings and we behave like human beings. God's spirit makes the big difference. It makes a difference. And we understand that. So Ezekiel had to warn them because they had gone in such depth of unrighteousness and rejection of godly counsel. And the Lord had to be sending prophets after prophets and warning them about their ways. And many prophets had gone their ways warning them, but they reject the prophets. Now the Lord sent him, sent, um, this prophet now for not the last time, but one more and said, warn them. And indeed, the prophet warned them and told them of what would befall them because they had earned their heart and would not turn. And so they were really brought into captivity um, and become servant of sin. What lesson we, can we learn from that as a church? It is indeed a factual thing that when, when saints, when believers begin to reject the counsel of leadership of their pastor, then there is only one direction to go. It is that that person is going to descend into a, a, a state that might bring them into rebellion at a lot of time. If you reject the counsel of your spiritual leader, you might descend into rebellion. It, it, is no, it is not praiseworthy. I have not seen in the scripture where people reject the counsel of their spiritual leader. Who, a leader who have, been, who have been following the word of God. Not that this leader comes with something new or set up something for himself and try to enforce it on the people. But this person is bringing the word of God that you can see for yourself. And people see that and reject that leader. There's not a praise, that's not a praiseworthy move. There's no blessing in that. And I would that individuals, wherever you are, whatever church you attend, sit and consider carefully how you respond to your spiritual leader. And I'm not just talking about within an apostolic church. I'm talking about in general. How we relate to people in leadership and people who have some authority over us. So every individual need a watchman. So every saint of God, we need a watchman. Amen? We need a watchman. And so... So everyone needs a living watchman. Everyone needs a living watchman. Say that, brethren. Everyone? Everyone needs a living watchman. Yes. Meaning, a living watchman. A watchman that breathes. A watchman that can see. A watchman that can move. A watchman that have life. A watchman that can talk with you. A watchman that can feel your pain. All right? Now, what, has, what is happening is we have a lot of persons today who we, have no, we are now relying on mechanisms, mechanical watchmen. Um, these are things that we are now giving into. All right? But we can never become complacent and rely solely on these things. There might be a place, yes, for, um, for technology within the church. In this present age in that we are living, there is a place for technology. If I tell you that, then it would be, I would be a foolish person because I can tell it was because of technological change over a period of time why we are able to even hold a book in our hands called the Bible. Remember in the very early days, Genesis chapter 1, um, well, he, let me say the, the Ten Commandments. You couldn't take the Ten Commandments um, to church. Moses would have struggled taking with him the Ten Commandments, much more the book of Genesis. In, you know, he couldn't take chapter one. He couldn't take the entire book of Genesis. He couldn't take the entire Bible. And even if they were written on scrolls, it would give him trouble to carry so, 
you know, such a big, bulky passage. So technology over the years, as, you know, we get the printing press and it brought us to this stage where we could have a Bible. But now technology has moved and we reach where we can have more than just a Bible now. We, you know, simple thing we call a smartphone. We can use it to do a whole lot of things. And one of the things that we are using it to do is one of what we are now doing, live streaming, amen, via Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. And we are using Zoom and we are doing all kinds of different platforms, you know, podcasts. And we are doing so many things today with the technology, reaching people where we really couldn't reach. You know, it is like it is making you, you are not omnipresent, you know, but it's like it's giving you a, a sense of omnipresence. You're all, you're, you're everywhere. People are seeing you all over, eh? Yes. Uh, yes, man. But we, we are not deceiving ourselves, and we must, should, should not be deceived. That in, much, in as much as I embrace this, and we should embrace this, this should never and can never substitute for the gathering of the people together. And this is no replacement, brethren. You might say, let me sit back and I'm not going to church. So let me follow YouTube and let me sermons. Let me follow what is happening on Facebook. Let me see what is happening. On, let me go do a Zoom service. Let me see what is happening. And I stay at home. All right? And we listen to pre-broadcast services. You, stay, you have stayed home. But nothing can replace coming together where we can meet each other, where we can meet our pastor, where we can meet the saints, where we can embrace each other. Amen. And we are talking about this period of time, COVID time, when things seem to be changing. But I'm going to pray against this spirit, amen, of separation, that when this is over, we'll be able to embrace each other again, shake and touch again. Praise the Lord Jesus, because this is how the Lord wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be separated, brethren, and meeting each other at a distance. Amen. It gives a lot of, amen, freedom to those who would want to keep malice. <laughs> it's, that's their playground, you know. We can say, praise the Lord and hi at a distance. I am not for that. I want to meet you again, saints of God. Where I can hug you, I can shake you. I shake your hands, praise God, without using a gloves. Amen. And sanitizing. I was doing it before. 63 years of, all years of age, brethren. I've been doing that. And here am I today, praise God. And you can say, Pastor, you're foolish. Use wisdom. I am using wisdom. I know the devices of the adversary. I know divisive he can be. But we pray against those spirit saints of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. As a pastor, I must declare this to you, man. A warning against the devices of the, of the adversary. So you stay home. Watch your, your, your Facebook sermons and watch your, your Zoom and, and watch your YouTube, amen. And you don't have to mingle with them. And I'm safe. I won't have to get COVID. You're going to get COVID whether or not you come church. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so we need godly men who will counsel you and guide you right to drive away some of these fears that is perplexing your mind. Some of us who we don't want to talk about death. But I talk about death, my friends. Death is, I talk about death because you know we're going to face it one day, but we're going to face death victoriously. Saints of God must face death, amen, in a victorious way. Praise God. So, we have our pastors because the Lord placed them into our life to make our lives better. Amen. And having this pastor as our, the pastor as our watchman, he has some authority. And let us not look at authority because I realize that people... When they talk about authority, it's like there's a level of fear that they believe this person wants to control your life. You know, authority is not like this. This authority is that your pastor is just there as a spiritual guide for you. He cannot insist that you do anything, right? We can't impose on you, amen, 
we, we can only encourage to live godly. But we can't make you live godly. It's still your choice to live godly. But we have a responsibility to bring the word of God to you. The true word of God for the saving of your soul. If you want to obey it, fine. And if you don't want to obey it, it's still fine. All right? But you know that both fineness don't bring the same consequence. Though both things might be fine. Hmm? So, so don't see pastor as this, as this big figure with a big hammer over your head want to sledge you down and control your life and control your movement. No, we are not here for that. We are here to give you spiritual guidance to help you. And, but sometimes, just as all those in Ezekiel time did not want to listen to Ezekiel, they didn't want to hear what he was saying. Because his message was a message of righteousness that would reflect Jehovah's desire in their life. And they did not want that. You find the very same thing in churches today. When pastors are expressing the word of God. Right? That would want people and make people live according to how God desire man to live. People reject and rebel against that. They still don't want that kind of a living. We have not changed much over these millenniums so all right so we have a responsibility to our watchman to our pastor it is our duty to seek the guidance of our spiritual authority the pastor that god has placed over our lives you know sometimes people and and i would like brethren to understand this clearly um, the church is not a shackle, and we have latitude. We can move in places. But when you have a church and you have a pastor, it is not a good thing for you to go and seek counsel from every member of the church except your pastor. And some of you tend to say your pastor not seen because he's not seeing things like how you are seeing it. All right? And you tend to judge your pastor and it is so wrong for you to do that. In the church, the Lord don't set up leaders over you. He, he gives you a, he gave, he gave you a pastor. And your pastor appoint other ministers within the assembly to work with him. So they, they, these other workers, they would, um, they would work with the pastor and take instruction from him. So when the saints need spiritual guidance, one of the first place that we need to do, brethren, we need to recognize the, the presence of your pastor within your assembly. Your pastor. Your pastor. Not to leave your church to seek counsel from another man. Brethren, and I don't practice that. I'm not, I don't counsel other pastors' membership. Right? If they have a problem with their pastor, they might talk to me and I say, go and discuss it with your pastor. Go and settle it. But I don't counsel members from other assemblies. And as members, we must recognize this too. That you must understand how this thing works. That if you reject the order of God, you cannot please God. It doesn't matter how the result comes out in our brethren. And if the result even turn out seem to be good, it doesn't mean that God is pleased. And we tend to believe that when things work out in our favor and look good, it's looking good, that God is pleased. No. God, the Lord has done so many things that, you know, to satisfy man that he, he, was, not in, he was not pleased with. God never pleased with Israel having king, but he worked with man. But man will have to pay the consequence. Eh? God was not pleased that Israel asked for meat and, 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 and food like the Israelites, like the Egyptians, but he gave them nonetheless, and consequence follow. The Lord facilitates man in their folly sometimes, but he, you know what happens? He puts his standard, and he will still put his guideline, and that is what he's going to judge us by. His guideline is the final thing. So we must look to the pastors that he placed in our life. You can't be a rolling stone Christian. You can't be rolling all over. So you, what church you're a part of? I'm not a part of any church. You're a rolling stone. Who is your pastor? Boy, my pastor is, 
you don't have a pastor. Because you know you can't because you don't have a church, you can't say this is your pastor. And you're just rolling like a stone. You can't be a rolling stone Christian. You have to be at a place where you can be under pastoral leadership. You must be a part of a flock. And that is by that's God's design. That's God's design. So we must fall in place. Where are you? Don't be a rolling stone. Don't be a roving Christian. Have a place of abode where you can abide. Amen? Praise God. So submit, our responsibility to, is to submit to ministerial leadership and willingly obey pastoral instruction. And listen, submit to ministerial leadership and willingly obey. All right, pastoral instructions. Willingly obey. I am not, a pastor should be careful of how he instructs God's people. That pastor must make sure that he is praying and listening to the voice of God. And listening to the voice of God is not something pop up in his head. You know, a little bubble burst in his head and he gets an idea. And when he looks at the idea, there's nothing matching in God's word with his idea. If he is going to come with something, it must be according to the word of God. So I'm saying that when that pastor is given instruction, it must be based upon the word of God. And therefore, if the pastor's instruction is based upon the word of God, then it is expected that the saints, that the believers, all right, listen to it and give submission to it. Allow it to, 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 to have precedence over your own personal feeling. Never reach the point in your life when you said, I don't need a pastor's instruction. When you reach that point in life that you said you don't need a pastor's instruction, you have become a backslider. You have backslidden from the faith. You have backslidden from the very word of God. When you reach that stage when you said, I don't need a pastor over me. That's a tragic situation, tragic stage that you have reached. Not needing a man over you. Never reach a stage when you said it's only God. I talk to me. You are in a very dangerous place when you reach that stage in your life where you believe that it is only God who can minister to you. I said before God's answer to man will still come through man. And he's not sending angels down here to tell you anything new. No angels will tell you anything new. Any angel tell you something that is not written in the book, of, into the book, into the Bible, it's a fallen angel. It's an agent of Satan. All right? Blessing and safety are the result of living under the authority of spiritual leaders. Blessings and safety are the results of living under the instruction of spiritual leaders. We cannot do that which is contrary to the word of God. We say we should submit ourselves to his word and believe we can enjoy a full free salvation. We cannot. We cannot do things that go against your pastor's Counsel, as long as your pastors listen to the word of God and believe that you are going to be blessed and safe. Behold, the wolf is there waiting to destroy you and to take your life. It is important that we listen to God's word and give heed to it. The Lord spoke directly to Ezekiel, you know, brethren. He said to him, son of man, stand up on thy feet and I will speak unto thee. The pastor must position himself in such a place where God can talk to him. He too must be under subjection, submission. He cannot find himself too big 
where the word of God become too small. And when the word of God becomes small, in, you know, is when we can say, you know, we do otherwise other than what the word of God says. So he said, son of man, stand up on thy feet and I will speak unto thee. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and I heard him and spake unto me. And he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that had rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. Now this was speaking about Ezekiel, even to that day when Ezekiel got the message and the instruction. But if Ezekiel should come back, I say, Ezekiel, you know that they're still rebelling even until this day. People are still rebelling against the word of God. I said, Ezekiel, after two, after about 3,000 years, Ezekiel, we have not changed much. We are still doing the same thing. So God still have to have his people warning, 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 warning. The seed of sin has set in. All right? And the destroyer of the soul and the saint is busy working. And we must be aware of that, saints of God. Pastors need pastors. Amen. As a pastor, I don't stand here solo. I would hate the day to come when I don't have somebody to report to. I can understand why men seek deity. I understand why men seek, make idols. Because a man realized that, listen man, I, there's somebody must be greater than I am. I just couldn't come into the world like this. You know, and so they, 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 they make something out of stone and wood or metal and said, this is what make us, right? Because there's a yearning for something greater, all right? They find security because when they make these things, they put their own laws and, and guidelines and they obey them and say, these, these things set these things for us. And so for their own safety, Right? They make their own gods and make their own laws to protect themselves from things. Now, you and I are children of God. And I as a pastor, I must have a pastor. I'm now saved for over 50 years. 50 years. And in all 50 years of my life, I've always had a pastor. And I don't want, if I live 50 more from now, brethren, and crawling like a tortoise, Right? I must have a pastor over me. And thank God I'm, submit, I'm in submission to my pastor, the bishop of the, of the organization. All right? And this, brethren, I'm not talking about no God. I'm submission. I'm in submission to my bishop. Okay? I am in submission to my bishop. Before I was a pastor, I submit to my, well, as a pastor, I would submit to my presbyter. Now, as a presbyter, I submit to my bishop. All right? And so he's my pastor, he's my leader, and I want it to be like this. And then myself and my bishop, yes, we have other leaders, but we all know that we all report to God in the final thing. Eh? So by my obedience, in re respecting those that the Lord said over me, I am honoring the Lord. I'm doing what? Honoring the Lord by my respect and obedience to those that the Lord set over me by my acknowledgement that there is somebody on earth which is above me that I must be accounted to, right? Give an account to, right? I know that. And by doing that, brethren, with much respect. And if I don't like everything, then I must respectfully discuss it with him and let him know. But I can't just become a wild card and rebel. Amen? All right. So Ezekiel had to go to them because they were not very good. But the Lord was so good, the Lord said to them, you know, in Jeremiah 3 and 15, the Lord said, I will give you pastors according to my heart. 
which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So God was gracious to Israel in their days of stumbling and their time of um, rebellion, rebellion, that he was going to give them pastors, all right, according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And in today's life, brethren, it's the same. God has placed pastors into the life of the saints. Amen. And the Lord has placed us into a church with leadership. All right? It is very important that we recognize that, that the Lord has done that for us. In the book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse 28, he warns the brethren. He says, Paul admonishing the pastors before his departure. He said to them, take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. So the first order of business is that the pastor must do what? Take heed to himself. You can become, you know, a wild card. You can be your own danger. You can destroy your own self. Right? You can destroy yourself and destroy others with you. You know, all of us, we are what we call somebody's hero. All of us. Doesn't matter sometimes how nonsensical you might think you are and how people view you. You are somebody's hero. So as a pastor, I must take heed unto myself. Because somebody is looking on. Somebody is watching me. Somebody want, is going to try to emulate me. All right? Yes, somebody is going to fashion their life like me. And whatsoever they see me do, they are going to do likewise. So I must be careful. I must take heed to myself. And after taking heed to myself, I must unto the flock. All the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseer. So after you take stock of yourself, make sure you are in the right, make sure you are walking according to God's word, make sure you are in obedience to the Spirit, praise God. We have a responsibility. That responsibility, brethren, is to feed the flock of God. Right? To oversee Give supervision to the flock. And when you talk about supervision to the flock, is that is you must be there to give guidance. Once the flock needs guidance, the flock will come and want to hear something from you. They might not be clear about doing something, about the instruction. You must be able to instruct the flock. The flock can't want to do something and they come to you and you say, well, you know, I'm not sure. So you're, you're free to do what you want to do. That is irresponsible, you know, it's irresponsible instruction to a flock. You must begin to, you must analyze things. You must look at it and make decision. And the flock might not like it, you know, but you must make sure that you are making the decision with love in your heart and with the best interest you are following the word of God in applying Amen. Making your application with the instruction. All right. So we, so we must oversee them. We must feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So pastor must understand that the church is not his property. The church, the church is God's body. The church is God's own. The church is God's purchased position. And we are only on the shepherd giving oversight to God's business. And we must do so, brethren, with a heart of gratitude and with care and tenderness and truthfulness. Even if you have to make decisions sometimes that the flock might not be in agreement with our like at the moment. What you need to ensure is that what you have done is based upon God's word and that it can be backed by the word of God. And you do it lovingly. Why it is so important for him, Paul said, 
for pastors to be there to take heed to themselves and to oversee the flock and to guide them properly. He said, I know, for I know that after my departing, right, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. They are out there waiting, but you know what? They're just waiting until you die. I was living in a particular place some years ago in my young, young days, just get married, you know. And we tried to keep a place very nice and we were setting up a nice garden and park. And, and, and it's just like some people in the community just couldn't take it. And we planted flowers. Let me not say we, I did it, right? Planted flowers around the place and set up the park nice. And brethren, you know, just as we turn our back, they just turn goat into it. <laughs> as we moved from the area it became a goat pen <laughs> oh lord but so we are saying that these things do happen the pastor must be careful to teach and to also help to mold others that after he's gone there are those who will be able to maintain the flock in a good way Paul said to Timothy that him commit this that you have heard of me. I commit, say, commit this which you have heard of me among many other witnesses. Commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So you know, just, just don't give it to men. But faithful men. Faithfulness. You can carry it. You will hold it. You will not change from it. You can teach others also. Pastors are very important, and the saints must see this. Praise the Lord Jesus. Trust in your pastor. Talk to him. Have, you know, talk to him. And some people will tend to believe that your pastor is not to be trusted. But you know what happened, brethren? That's what the devil would want you to believe, that he, should not, he cannot be trusted. The pastor watch, is a watchman, and he hears from God. He must set himself in a place that he must hear the word of God. The watchman sees what other people don't see. And many times, brethren, people might believe that, you know, pastor must see through your eyes. And the only time pastor is seen is when pastor sees things like, oh, I see things. You ever hear that kind of thing? Yes. You go to church and certain things are happening, and boy, the pastor is not seeing. Good? The pastor is not hearing from God. So when the pastor sees, well, well, the pastor is seeing what I am seeing and the pastor is, is speaking what I am thinking. So pastor is hearing from God and pastor is seeing. Pastor has no mind of his own. Pastors, the approval come from you. No. Pastor's approval comes from God and his word. The word of God. Right is what gives the approval, not what the congregation think. And sometimes you might preach and they like it, and it might sound good. But sometimes that is not what God really wants for them, you know. The pastor should be alert of the dangers that are ahead. Yes, and warn the people. So the pastor must see that. Now, he's not everything, and what he needs to do, the pastor, is to see the, the available resources that is around and employ them, get them involved. The pastor is not everything. The pastor might not be a healer. The pastor might not be the greatest of the preachers. He might be not be a great evangelist, but he must look around him. Do you see Preachers in the church? Do you see teachers in the church? Do you see any prophets in the church? What do you see? Amen. Do you see other persons look like you that they're able, they'll be able to train and become amen, a successor after you? See them. Pull them in and try to ready them. That's what the pastor must do. So it cannot, it's not everything to all men. And I think some pastors are trying to be all things to all men. It's a wrong approach. We must be loving, caring, and tender to all men. 
But you as a pastor can't be everything. For you must see that the flock is fed. Find the teachers among you and let them teach. Right? So although you are not directly the teacher, but you are ensuring that the flock is fed. You can't be at everything, but ensure that things work for the edification, for the perfecting of the saints, pastors. So we are on the lookout. We must be there looking. So it tells us that the Lord placed these different gifts in the church. And it is there for, amen, our particular reason. He gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers. And these are there for a specific purpose. These are there for the perfecting of the saints. Making the saints ready. Making them come in resemblance and in to what the Lord want them to be. That is why we are there. All right? For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. And that is going to be there till we all come in the unity of the faith. So these gifts are there, brethren. You know, um, you're not going to live your life any kind of winningly life. And then you say, God, perfect you at the ending of your time. And you'll, and you'll be saved. There's nothing like that. Pastors and evangelists and teachers are here to help to guide you, to get you ready for the day of your departure. And if you reject them, you will not, the Lord will not fix it when you reject them at the last day. If you reject your counsel of your, if you reject these gifts and individuals that the Lord has placed in your life, Reject them and you will not be perfected. It is here, you know, verse 12. I place them in the church for the perfecting of the saints, the readying of the saints. This is what it is, for the readying of them. Make them ready, all right? They, we don't know if, it is, if they are flawless or faultless or whatever, but they are there readying the saints for the day of their departure, Okay? That's one, one thing. And, that, and for the work of the ministry, that we can serve others likewise and make each other more, life more comfortable. And that we become knowledgeable of the word of God till we all come into the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, to know who Jesus is, unto a perfect man, until we come to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. This is what these ministries have done to us, brethren. So it's not when Jesus comes, he's going to bring us into this position. The Lord has placed people into our lives to bring us into readiness. Pastor is one such person. Amen? So don't do your own thing, saints. It will not be well with you. So as pastors, we are here. We are here, brethren, to give you care, <laughs> comfort you, and to correct you. Yes, we are not only here to care and to comfort, but to also correct. Yes, we can't believe that, you know, you're doing things and we can only comfort you and, and understand your dilemma and understand your failure. But we must be able to point out to you, yes, you're wrong. You, 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 are being, you are in hero, you know. But as a pastor, we must be able to do that for our saints and to be well with them. This is what um, Ezekiel would have to do. Point to them, right, about their ways and try to correct them. And, 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 it, and, and it save him, right? It take their blood off his shoulder. We must do that, brethren. If we don't, if we only care and comfort, yes, but we are not letting people know that, yes, you have error. Let them become knowledgeable of their failure and that it is not a good thing. It is not something that is, that, 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 that is to be esteemed. Then we are going to be in trouble. All right, let me run it down as we come in down. All right. 
So the watchman, the scripture tells us here, in Hebrews 13, 17, he said, obey them that have the rule over you. And don't look on the rule as a, as a big stick and a big whip. Just that they are there to, to guide you. Somebody must be in leadership. So, so as not to have anarchy, obey them that is, you know, over you in leadership. Okay? That's what it is saying. And submit yourself unto them. Submit yourselves. Why? For they watch for your souls. Why you should do it? For they watch for your souls, brethren. It is not about money collecting. It's not about making you popular. Amen. The spiritual leader, first responsibility is to watch for your soul. Your soul is precious. They must pray for you. They must want you to walk in a, in a straight, in a path, a straight and narrow way. They must love you to that extent, brethren, that they will not compromise, amen, their position. But they would encourage you, amen, to, to turn from what you are doing. If you are not right. They are watching for your soul. As they that must give account. So we have to give an account. That they may do it with joy. And not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. So remember I tell you. You can't disobey. Disregard. Spiritual leadership. And let me, not, let me get it clear now. Your pastor. And believe that you will get a handshake from the Lord. Don't deceive yourself. Don't let no one deceive you. You cannot get a handshake from God. When you become unruly to those that are supposed to be your spiritual leader. You may have disagreements in our brethren. Remember, I'm not saying you won't have disagreement. You may have spiritual disagreements. You may have disagreement. Okay? But... Deal with it in the proper way, according to God's word, so that you don't become a displeasure to God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. I'm going to do the final slide. It's said, awake. I, Zechariah chapter 13, 7 and 9 to 9. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow. Said the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd. And the sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. So it says, all right. Awake, O sword. Those who want to rise up. Those who have a problem with my shepherd. Rise up against him and smite him. And I tell you, the sheep will scatter. In a church, when you have rebellion starts in a church, you're going to have... You know, it's going to scatter. And you'll always have people rise up and, and gone with them. Right? And, and we support. But God is going to have a remnant. You see? That he will speak to. And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that all the land, amen, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. Yes, and will refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. And I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. God will restore the, even that little, amen, remnant that is left. Amen. Your pastor is very important. Strike him and you think you will destroy everything. Yes, sheep will scatter, but I will deal with the remnant that is left. Safeguard yourself. Play it safe, saints of God. Obey the words of God and let the Lord direct your path. God has placed pastors in your life for your own good that it might be well with you. And if you don't have a pastor, seek one now. May the Lord bless you. And wherever you are, if you are in a church and you are having problem with your spiritual leader, go and make peace with him. 
Don't be a roving Christian. Don't be a one who have no abiding place. Don't say that, boy, you know, I'm freelancing. You know, you're a freelance Christian, you're a backslider. All right, there's no such thing. Find a route. Find somewhere. Settle somewhere. Can't be all over the world. Amen. God has never sanctioned such behavior. If you want to be right, follow the words of God. Find a church, get a pastor, submit yourself to his leadership in Jesus' name. Boy, it's me. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness and your love towards us. We thank you for your word of life. We thank you, Lord God, for ministering unto us. God, touch our hearts this morning. God, there might be many today, God, who are in a situation, God, where they are in malice and have, God, some level of animosity against their spiritual leader. But I pray today, Lord, that you will give them the heart, oh God, to make things right and that they will go, my Lord, and listen to your voice. Minister your people today. And let these words, God, be a blessing upon their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless. Thank you for watching and tune in, amen, in the next 20 minutes when we be live streaming our morning service. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.